Galton seemed unfazed. Iris strode past him in the rain. She wanted his walking staff, a weapon to protect herself from an ambush. But she was too late. Leaves exploded into the air. The smell of torn vegetation. Torn earth. Green. Wet. A windy rush of movement. The thing grabbed her adroitly around her middle. It didn't thrash her around or tear at her. Didn't break her neck like a big cat would. No, it spun her, round and round. It didn't really feel like an animal attacking her. It was more like she'd fallen into a thoughtless machinery that crushed, bound, and blinded. Vised at her torso, her legs were tied close together, and her arms were pinned to her sides. A gauzy, suffocating mask quickly encased her head. She had no space. In a flash, she could barely breathe. She creeps. She creeps. She leaps. She leaps! Iris didn't see him anymore. Had he been helping her attack her? Her struggles were muffled and went unheeded. Iris opened her mouth to scream, but the precise creature gripped her so firmly she was unable to produce any noise whatsoever. I'm dying. Panic set in, a claustrophobic pressure that grew unbearable. Her greatest desire was to thrash her arms and legs about wildly and twist her head back and forth while screaming, screaming, But none of this was possible. It was a kind of instant madness. These are my last moments. This is how it ends for me. (sighs) Iris sat up in her bed. Her hands were balled into fists at her side. She unclamped them. Sweaty fingers, pink moons, where she dug her nails into her palms. Under the blanket, the bedsheet braided between her legs. She kicked free, blinking at her sun-filled bedroom. A bright, cold morning view, frost on rooftops, smoke unwound like yarn from the neighbor's chimney pipes. There'd been no mosquitoes in the forest. She and Galton standing there right before the rain started. His puny fire wouldn't have discouraged mosquitoes. That should have tipped her off. A clue to where she'd been. The reality of things. Because there were always mosquitoes in the jungle. Except when that jungle was a place you traveled to in your mind while you were asleep and dreaming. A dream. But not only a dream. A dream plus more. She had found Galton. They talked. It was progress. She also saw what was with him in the dream forest. A monster. It had glossy black eyes. She counted them after it seized her. Eight eyes. The same number as it had legs. A beautiful symmetry. Despite her terror, she admired that quality.